Zimbabwean authorities said the country's monthly inflation is expected to decline to 10% by the end of this year, uh, which is currently around 25%. Uh, Just as the local currency unit, the Zimbabwean dollar is firming up against the U.S. greenback on the back of new gold coins that the central bank sold into the market in two tranches uh, of 2,000 uh, each last month. Let's go down now to Eddie Cross in Harare. Cross is an economist and a policy analyst. It's good to see you tonight, sir. Good to have you again on the show. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you too. It's, it's always good. You got some of the gold coins from me, my friend. <laughs> if you've got the money, <laughs> they're, quite, they're, quite, they're quite expensive. Are we negotiating, um, my friend? <laughs> so how much I'm is it? Tell not, me. How much is a gold coin that you have that, that's been on sale? The 4,000 coins that have been minted so far were sold for about, um, I think it was $2,800 each. Oh wow! Um, that's that's quite a premium over and above the the market price. Yeah, if you sell that to me, even if I got the money, I'm not too sure I can get it out of Nigeria to you. So something's got to happen, my friend. So it's a bit of an issue here. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. It's it's, it's, where, ma where? it's, it's mainly it's mainly a store of wealth. It's it's not a currency. It, it won't be used in the marketplace at all. It's a store. It's a how you can store your wealth if you want to. So, so, how, so how does it work? How does it work? Because uh, the news is that the Zimbabwean dollar seems to be recovering because the central bank has been quite uh, um, uh, lucky in ruling out this. What's the reality on the ground? No, the reality on the ground is that the gold coin issue has not had any real impact at all. Very limited. Um, they're a very small number and uh, the amounts of money involved are relatively insignificant compared to the rest of our economy. I think the main issue confronting us remains uh, monetary expansion, and uh, and I think this continues unabated. And in fact, today in the local market, we've uh, the the PMR rate, the parallel market rate, has in fact surged once once again. It's again over 800. So I, I'm not too sure about the projections on inflation. I think that inflation is unlikely to really come down significantly. The month on month has eased. Uh, but the annual rate of inflation continues to rise. Uh, interesting. Uh, I'm going to go back to how the gold coins issuance work between the banks and users like yourself. Do you work into your bank and say, I want to buy gold, or you, you pick the gold, you, you exchange it for value, for goods and services? How does it really work? Tell me. You apply to the Reserve Bank to buy gold coins. Mm -hmm. You tell them how many you want, and you pay your money. That's it. Okay, so, so if I buy them, what do I do with them? Unless you, you, want, me come, them you want me bank. to come down to Harare physically and then you show me how it works. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know whether you'll be allowed to take them back to Nigeria. Oh, um, God. But oh, you, great. If, but if you take, but, but take the, the South African Kruger Rand. That's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm traded quite freely in jewelry shops and in, in, in you can buy a Kruger Rand at the airport in Johannesburg. Um, we're not doing that yet. You have to apply to the Reserve Bank. But I think a market for these things is going to emerge fairly quickly. So um, is the Zimbabwean dollar still as under much pressure as it is right now as we were when we started the year or when we were ending 2021 and there were a bit of hope that the, the, the local currency will remain the de facto currency and Zimbabwe will not let go of the local dollar in favor of the American greenback? We are not going to dollarize. We're going to continue to maintain a multi-currency environment. But the local currency has been under huge pressure in the last six months, huge pressure. And uh, I'm afraid that is the principal driver of inflation here. Um, money supply creation obviously is part of that. But the, the main driver has been the PMR rate. And we have been unable to get that under control, despite the fact that our trading position is actually very strong at the moment. We have a significant balance of payment surplus. So, OK, then let's talk about inflation, because, again, um, uh, which the Ministry of Finance is targeting says that on a month on month basis, we'll go down to 10 percent by the end of the year. If you look at the analysis, it's about 260 
uh, percent, as it were. How difficult are things around that right now? Is this gold coins, is the exchange rate feeding into that inflation? What else is feeding into it? If we don't tackle the basis on which we, the, which we trade our foreign currency, if we don't put that right, I'm afraid there's little hope for the local currency. I think the local currency will continue to depreciate very rapidly. In fact, uh, we are rapidly dollarizing at the moment. The market is doing that. The government's not dollarizing, but the, but the market is dollarizing. And if we want to stop that process, we've got to adopt a more conventional means of trading our hard currency in, in flows. Okay, uh, what about food inflation, domestic inflation, how folks are getting by in, in Zimbabwe because of inflation, the high level of uh, inflation when it comes to by getting by with daily goods and services, moving from one point to the other, transportation, food, medicine, things like that, water? Well, Zimbabweans have been there before. Remember, in 2000 to 2008, we experienced a period of, of hyperinflation. And we, we've, got, we've got used to these kind of unstable conditions. And, and somehow we get by, we manage. And I, and I think that that's what Zimbabweans are doing today. But nevertheless, the overall position is that living standards in Zimbabwe, particularly for people on, in paid employment, is declining. So uh, what is the economic trajectory looking like for Zimbabwe for the full year 2022? The Minister of Finance uh, seems to be very optimistic. Well, I, I, I'm more optimistic than he is. I think the base economy is actually growing very fast. And it's, and it's being driven by uh, about a 30% rise in export earnings as against 18% rise in imports. And uh, th this export uh, performance is driven by the international environment. You, you've just covered that to some extent. But we're in the game of the new, new economy, uh, lithium, uh, platinum. Uh, you know, those are the, the metals and minerals going forward, which are going to yield considerable uh, uh, monetary returns. And I can see our financial situation actually becoming stronger and stronger from an exchange rate point of view, from a balance of payments point of view. And that's what's driving our growth. We've also got a building boom underway. Our diaspora is investing massively in, in housing here. We have a million houses under construction. Everywhere you look, uh, there is building sites, brick, bricks on trucks moving around. We're selling 4 million tons of, of cement this year. And uh, you know, housing has a very high multiplier effect so that is further pushing uh, our growth rate. We've had a very disappointing crop year, and that is going to give us problems because we're going to have to increase uh, imports of primary agricultural com commodities quite significantly over last year. Interesting. Uh, I almost missed that. Thank you so much, uh, Eddie. In terms of uh, Zimbabweans, the diaspora remittance is $800 million uh, for the period in the, the June or July. And I said, oh, wow, you must be in money right now. I'm sure you're getting part of those diaspora money in, uh, Eddie. Don't tell me how much you've got for a number of reasons. So um, this is steady <laughs> inflows from Zimbabweans from abroad. Uh, is this something that you think is, uh, the government is looking at as part of the uh, inflow in hard currencies that could be used to continue propping up, managing the Zimbabwean dollar and keeping it moving and hoping that someday something will get really worked out and the authorities will be able to break out the currency vis-a-vis uh, -vis the US dollar. Let's uh, wrap it up on that. Yeah, you know, we have about 5 million working adults abroad. In South Africa, that includes about 600,000 people in executive positions. Wow. And these people send money home. Uh, they're all supporting their families at home. They, they about, about a I would say about 40% or even 50% of our education costs are met by diaspora remittances. And that's on top of the building boom. Um, so I think the remittances are hugely important to us. I would, in fact, say at the moment that they're probably our largest single source of foreign exchange. 
Interesting, Eddie. Um, I will not be able to touch about mining today, uh, but, but the news is that uh, the, the, the authorities are looking at mining as a, as a way of uh, getting the economy uh, across the line into 2021. What's your outlook for the rest of the year? Uh, just uh, briefly speaking, what do you think the outlook could be for the GDP uh, and all that? Investments in the mining sector right now are at record levels. Um, I estimate that Mines, international mining houses are investing about $6 billion in new capacity. And many mines are doubling capacity. The, our gold sector and the lithium sector and the platinum sector are the principal focuses of, of, of growth. But I see this continuing. I, I don't see any easing in this. I think the, the fact is we have the resources and the world needs them. A new development for us is massive Chinese investment in steel production. Uh, we have a steel plant for 10 million tons of steel. That's 35 million tons of iron ore a year uh, going in at the moment. It'll be, it'll be operational next year in August, a year from now. And that's ultimately going to make a huge difference to, to our trade position. And the Chinese are now talking about doubling that. So there's a lot of activity in the mining sector. In fact, the mining sector is quite exciting at the moment. Okay. Thank you so much, Eddie Cross in Harare. Thank you so much for those insights. Too. Have a wonderful evening. And it's nice uh, chatting with you Same down to you. there again. Thank you so much. And see you next time. Eddie Cross, economist and policy analyst in uh, Harare, Zimbabwe tonight. <laughs>